much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title, we are doing another deconstructing personal style series video. And today we are talking about the icon, the legend, Audrey Hepburn. In these kinds of videos, I really like to center their handbags because obviously I have a love for handbags, but I really wanted to frame it around this concept of personal style, why it works, how they did it, and like what we can learn. So for this video, I really thought it was important that I talk about her early life because I think a lot of events that happened in her early life really shaped who she became as a person. She was born in 1929 in Ixelles, Brussels, Belgium, and she lived a life of privilege. Her mother came from Dutch aristocracy and her father traveled working for a trading company. She traveled often. But one thing that happened that had a devastating impact on her life was her father joined the British Union of Fascists, left her family, and when World War II happened, Audrey Hepburn found her passion. Her passion was ballet. She loved to dance, she loved ballet. She was very serious about pursuing this, but she also needed to do this because this was also an extremely difficult time for her, for her family. Her family was of a more prominent ranking in Dutch society, so they were immediately targets. Her brother was executed. Other members of her family were sent to labor camps. She was very affected by what was going on, especially during the German occupation. So what she did to cope with this, she used dance as this way she could be a part of the Dutch resistance. And what she did specifically was she would put on these underground performances to raise money for the Dutch resistance. And on top of that, it was also a very dark period because there was also what was called the Dutch famine. There were severe cases of starvation. Many people died. A lot of people, including her family, resorted to eating and like repurposing tulip bulbs to make food because the Germans had blocked food and fuel from coming into certain regions of the country. That affected her because as a young girl, you know, she wasn't getting the nutrition uh, she needed. But Audrey, despite all this, was very persistent on pursuing ballet. This was her dream, this was her love. Her mother knew she wanted this and her mother wanted to do this for her. And despite her mother losing all of her wealth, she would work as a cook and as a housekeeper in order to pay for her daughter's ballet lessons so that she could pursue her dream. And Audrey's hard work did pay off and she eventually got a scholarship to study at a prestigious school in London. So this leads me to the first point I want to talk about and how I think her background in dance is something that just like affected her style just naturally affected her obvious presence on camera if you've ever seen a movie i remember as a child i spent a lot of time with my grandma me and my sisters we would you know watch all these old films and i remember being just in awe watching the movie my fair lady just the way she moves just like her presence it's yes there's dancing in it there's you know all of that but just the way she like walks in clothing. Like the clothing would not be the same if it did not move the way she moved. So back to her in London, one of the most crushing and like devastating things that she realized was that she probably was never fit to be a ballerina and she would never become a ballerina because of her malnutrition, because of what happened to her body during the famine. She did not get the nutrition she needed, but she decided she wanted to become an actor instead. She almost had to start all over again. She didn't have any formal training, but she was very disciplined. She was an extremely hard worker. So she started to take minor roles in musical theater productions and later on films. She was very disciplined. It was her hard work and her persistence that would pay off. And it did pay off when she got the starring role in the film Roman Holiday. And originally the producers of this film wanted to actually get Elizabeth Taylor to star. When they saw Audrey Hepburn's audition, they were like, yes, we want her instead. This is kind of the second lesson I want to talk about. And I don't know if it's like a lesson, but just kind of like point, I guess I want to talk about is her frame. What is so iconic about her, but also kind of, if you think about it kind of twisted in a way, is her slender frame. She's a very extremely thin woman. Like she's a very slim, slender woman. Her frame is one of the like most iconic aspects of her and why she was different from all the other starlets of her time. Like Elizabeth Taylor was someone that was fuller and had like more of an hourglass frame. Audrey Hepburn kind of had more of like this boyish, very thin figure. And like while she was someone that was 
physically fit and she was a dancer. What is kind of twisted about this is that while she's like idolized for her frame, her frame was like a result of famine. She could not pursue her dream of becoming a ballerina because she was malnourished. I'm bringing this as like a point, but maybe this is like a greater social critique for another video. But because in the 1950s, right, like she got this role in 1953. The ideal woman was like that hourglass. You still had curves, you had a small waist, but this sort of thin, basically like malnourished woman that is very much in style even today was something that was not at all considered, at least on like a larger pop cultural scale. She was a very different person and she knew she was different. She knew she had a different frame from what like the ideal woman was. She had different features. She had like that like boyish gammon figure about her. The clothing that these women wore was not necessarily gonna look good on her. The clothing that looked good on like Elizabeth Taylor and Sophia Loren would not have the same impact on her frame. So she kind of had to take inspiration elsewhere. And one type of style she was very inspired by, this was sort of this era in the 1950s of what was called the beat generation. And so this was almost the exact opposite of what this idealized woman or even kind of like way of being. The beat generation or like, you know, beat poets, those that sort of this, that embraced this type of lifestyle opposed what was like the cultural norm. It was very much a counterculture movement. It was a response and in opposition to kind of this idea of the nuclear family. The people that were a part of this like beat generation, they were into things like literature and poetry and art. And this movement was really popular in places like San Francisco and New York. There was kind of this approach of more of a bohemian lifestyle, more of a free thinker. You were more free spirited, but there was like a really specific aesthetic that the beat generation had in the 1950s. And it was to wear dark form fitting, very minimalistic clothing, but it had sort of this like rebellious flair. Things like black turtlenecks, black Levi's jeans, capri pants, which Audrey Hepburn wore a lot. This opposition to what a lot of women wore in the 1950s, these beautifully printed, flowery, hourglass shaped dresses. The woman that embraced sort of this beat generation, it was often like referred to in like uh, negative ways, like beatnik kind of style. A few people that also had this look were people like James Dean. If someone that was inspired by this lifestyle was like Bob Dylan. I think of like the way even like Andy Warhol dressed. This was definitely in opposition to the American conservative way of life. So it was very much opposite to like Betty Draper or like Grace Kelly. Audrey Hepburn really embraced this aesthetic. Like she was known for wearing black slim clothing or just very like neutral clothing. She didn't necessarily wear these like you know, bright, bold prints. Uh, she would wear like ballet flats and capris. This exact silhouette was what like the beat generation wore. She totally embraced this counterculture, which I found completely interesting because, you know, we look at these things like ballet flats, capri pants is very like classic and turtlenecks, but it was actually really rebellious in the 1950s, who would have thought? So this brings me on to my next point where she was such a persistent person. Nothing got in the way of what she wanted. She was very interested in the fashion of Hubert de Givenchy. And what's interesting is whenever I think about Givenchy as a brand, and, and like Audrey Hepburn, they're kind of like synonymous. I always think of them together, right? Like Audrey Hepburn, Givenchy, Givenchy, like Audrey Hepburn. And Audrey Hepburn knew the importance of fashion and she's even stated how fashion was like a means of communication for her. On screen, while she wasn't a trained actor, her fashion and what she wore and how she could wear her clothing would be just as expressive as her acting and whatever she was missing in terms of like her acting, her clothing could take her to where she needed to be. So she was very interested in Givenchy because he was kind of one of the leading luxury French houses of the time. She arranged an appointment to meet him and he actually thought he was meeting Catherine Hepburn and he was kind of like disappointed because he was like, oh, who's this person, right? It's not who I thought it was. And so he like declined her request of having him dress her. So then she said, well, how about, you know, we go for dinner and talk about it. And the rest is history after that. She enchanted him, like he immediately fell in love with her. She was just naturally a charming person. She kind of had like the figure that he 
often would use in his models. She was like a good muse and like she knew like she would be good for him. And for the next 40 years, he dressed her and they became best friends. And she described his clothing as something that created her personality. Now onto the handbags. When we talk about handbags, I always like wanna kind of have something specific. And normally I would have something like a specific style. For the first one I wanna talk about, I don't have a specific style. And that's specifically because Audrey Hepburn was someone that had like a lot of custom items made for her like she had Givenchy like custom make clothing for the film she was in in addition to that she would have handbags that he would custom make for her these handbags whether they were like made out of croc or like other sorts of like fabric materials she just had them made because she essentially could like they were best friends I would just say one thing that she was known for was wearing Givenchy and by nature that would mean his handbags. One thing I kind of wanted to talk about was how Audrey Hepburn really established for herself not only just like this iconic beat generation like beatnik kind of inspired fashion but one really specific prominent type of silhouette she was known for it was called like the boat neck exactly what it sounds like it's like your neck looks more like a boat shape this was very much one of the more iconic look for audrey hepburn but was also like an iconic look for Givenchy clothing when we just talk about personal style i always just think personal style is knowing what is like best for your silhouette like what is the most flattering form of silhouette like seriously like just think about it like what is the most flattering silhouette for you and like audrey hepburn i think the boat neck for her was like probably one of the most flattering like neckline. So handbag number two I'm gonna talk about is the one you probably know of and if you don't know, I'll just like talk about it anyways because it's pretty interesting even if you do know. If you're not familiar, the Louis Vuitton Speedy was actually a creation inspired by Audrey Hepburn. So the actual history is this, Louis Vuitton first came out with this bag in 1930 called the Express and it was like basically just a large luggage piece. Audrey Hepburn wanted this bag, specifically she made this request that she wanted this bag made in a smaller, compact size for like everyday use for like everyday wear ideal for someone that travels that is on the go and something that can also be flattened into a suitcase right like it's not like this structured box leather kind of bag something that she could while she's going from like la to paris or wherever she's got that bag she can throw in her luggage and this was a hit right like it's also become i feel for a lot of people let me know if this is true for you but i feel like a lot of people this is like their first luxury bag now i feel like because louis vuitton's prices are like so high probably not for a lot of people but it's kind of like one of those bags where if you're like a louis vuitton collector you probably have like a speedy in your collection if not multiple and i saw this really interesting article on purse bop where they document this exhibit of audrey hepburn's personal items and she had like also personal trunks a louis vuitton script cover she had like a series of louis vuitton slgs she loved louis vuitton kind of just goes to show you these like traveled goods specifically i feel are just so iconic even just using like the script cover like to me it's just a testament of how classic and iconic this monogram print is. Now let's talk about handbag number three. She wore several Hermes bags. I think I wanted to highlight her love for Hermes because she had several bags, but there was one specific design that she had in multiple colors and materials. This is actually an exclusive design, Hermes designed specifically for her. She had this bag in various colors, black, white, brown, suede. That's kind of why I'm like highlighting this bag. I also wanna highlight her love for the Hermes Kelly bag. Like she loved the Kelly bag, but specifically in Croc. And there's many occasion where she is seen wearing this bag. She's documented wearing this bag quite often. I've talked about this bag in like other videos, but like this bag, it's like an example of something that is like really sophisticated, so classic, so timeless. This bag will like never go out of style, especially in like the croc with like the texture, alligator, someone who knows better than me can correct me. And so in conclusion, when we look at Audrey Hepburn's style and we look at how iconic it is, she's almost like the definition of classic, right? Like there's so many references made to her style, like even today, like I think of actresses like 
Lily Collins, Angelina Jolie. It feels like she's kind of inspired by her style. Everyone is, right? There's just something so timeless about her style. It's so like simple too, right? There's nothing like really over the top. Yes, like Breakfast at Tiffany's in that like long, like beautiful black dress with the long gloves and like the glamorous accessories. But when we just think of her silhouettes, they were very quite simple very wearable, pretty much anyone can take inspiration from that. And also very liberating too. There's two key takeaways I really want to talk about with her style. For her, I think the concept of customization was very important for her. She knew that she needed things to be perfect for her, like on screen, and she knew fashion was a means of communication. So she could not not have clothing that looked right for her. Her measurements, her frame was not the typical woman in the 1950s. You know, 1960s a little bit different, but in the 1950s specifically, she had to get someone like Givenchy. She needed to get someone that was in the realm of luxury to convey what she wanted to on camera. Now, obviously we as like everyday people, we can't just be like Hermes, Louis Vuitton, like, let's make a bag for me. But just like taking that simple approach to just how we wear our clothes, having clothing that is just fitted to our frames, having clothing that ultimately is more flattering on us, having things that are just more customized to our personal preferences, our personal style, to me is always going to have a huge impact. And point number two that I thought was quite interesting was her embrace of counterculture, specifically like the beat generation, having this sort of cultural awareness of what was anti-conformist, what was like different, and how she could embrace that. It's just wild because like this silhouette, like capri pants, ballet flats, a black turtleneck, like so simplistic, so like classic. You saw someone wearing that, you wouldn't even like think of it, but it was like a form of rebellious dressing in the 1950s. Her taking that and being like, yes, I'm gonna normalize that, I'm gonna modernize that, and I'm gonna make it a classic, I think is kind of interesting. It makes me think, you know, when I look at a lot of these people, like her, or even someone like Carolyn Bissett Kennedy, a lot of these kind of iconic figures in fashion that are specifically known for being classic. They were never actually really that classic for their era. They changed the definition of classic, but what they were initially doing was pretty groundbreaking. It honestly makes me wonder like what is the I don't know, like maybe I'm just too old, but I just like don't know what the counterculture of today is. Like, is there even a counterculture today? Does that even exist? I it makes me wonder. Honestly, I have no idea. I always find that interesting about fashion how you can take inspiration from like counterculture from other like subcultures and kind of like normalize not just the style but kind of like the ideology behind it anyways that is my video today what did you think about today's video what do you guys think about audrey hepburn do you like her style is it a style that resonates with you what do you think about her handbags please let me know what you think in the comments and i hope to see you in the next one bye